Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Is there a risk that Dillian White could lose some of his marquee value that he's built up recently? And what I mean by that is the options when you look at who he could potentially fight, he's penciled to fight in July, it's starting to look a little bit thin. And there's been talk of uh, a number of opponents, Alexander Povetkin, Luis Ortiz, they are a couple of names that have been mentioned. But there's certainly no guarantee and there's nothing coming from those other camps that suggest that a Dillian White fight is immediately going to be announced. And we are now in April, so that's only a couple of uh, months away. So he will need to get into training camp soon. So you'd you'd think that um, they'd want to announce an opponent shortly, very shortly, especially as a Dillian White fight, if it's in the UK in July, I think they're talking about July 13th, it would be pay-per-view, likely at the O2. So that's an event that you would need to um, announce well in advance to, to market, to sell tickets, uh, to drum up fan interest. And I'm not so convinced that those fights are going to happen at all. And when you look at the rest of the top 20 or so, who else is available that Dillian White could fight now? And that's the big question now, because there is a risk, in my view, that um, kind of like 2017, that he could kind of go into some sort of stasis type situation where after the Derek Chisora win in uh, December 2016, 2017 just completely drifted. He had a tune-up fight against Malcolm Tan, and then later in the year, he fought Robert Hellenius in a sort of hastily scheduled fight that was on an Anthony Joshua undercard. He certainly lost some of the buzz that he'd built up with fans um, after the Derek Chisora fight through, effectively, inactivity and an inability to get the right fights at the right time. It was only after the Lucas Brown fight, which ultimately sort of proved to be a bit of a mismatch, Dillian White um, looked very good in there, took care of Brown, and then he upset Joseph Parker. Well, I guess heading into that, many people saw that as, as close of a 50-50 as possible, but he put on a pretty good performance, better than some were expecting. He knocked Parker down on that, uh, even Anthony Joshua couldn't do that. He dropped Parker twice, although one of them was from an accidental head clash. So if we actually go through some of these options here, because obviously Anthony Joshua at number one, here's the box rec top 20. Well, that's not going to happen. He is fighting on June 1st, so he won't be fighting Dillian White. And Dillian White has already had his opportunity to face Joshua but he turned it down, and it must be noted, he's had other opportunities. As I've mentioned before, he turned down the IBF final eliminator with Kubrat Pulev. That was mid-2018. He could have fought um, Pulev, but ultimately took the payday against Joseph Parker. At the same time that the uh, Pulev uh, final eliminator was out there, the WBC called an eliminator with Luis Ortiz. And he could have taken that fight, but he opted to take the money fight. And, you know, there's no shame in that, but it kind of is what it is he went for the money and later in the year he also went for the money in a fight that a lot of fans weren't necessarily dying to see with Derek Chisora sure there was some interest there but when other options were considered Dominic Brazil and Luis Ortiz for me at least I thought that those were better fights because we'd been there done that got the postcard with Derek Chisora and you know it really was sort of a fight that was uh, White was heavily favored to win ultimately he knocked Chisora out it was a pretty competitive fight and he was down on a couple of the scorecards but White took care of business in the end but another situation where if he really wanted to fight Dominic Brazil he could have overpaid him set up uh, set himself up to be the WBC mandatory and now he would be in a title fight with Deontay Wilder so some of what's happening with White in his career has been dictated by money and paydays we can't get away from that and he is a prize fighter after all so you can't begrudge him that but some of the narrative floating around that um, he's done more than anyone uh, to deserve a title shot and should get one He's had his opportunities. He turned the Joshua one down. He's turned down other uh, eliminators. And also he could have fought Dominic Brazil and taken that mandatory spot from him. So we have to sort of temper some of the rhetoric in regards to White because it's been a calculated decision for paydays. The two times he's been on pay-per-view, uh, apart from that first Joshua fight years ago, was Joseph Parker and Derek Chisora. Money fights, plain and simple. There was nothing on the line at all in those fights. Uh, Deontay Wilder, well, he is fighting May 18th against Dominic Brazil. He's not going to voluntarily just fight um, Dillian White next, so we can rule that one out. Tyson Fury is fighting in June against Tom Schwartz. He won't be fighting Dillian White in July. 
Here, Dillian White is at number four, and this kind of speaks to some of the opposition that he's faced. While there may not have been a lot on the line, you know, guys like Hellenius, Parker, Brown, that is, and obviously the Chisora fights twice, that has certainly bolstered his ranking uh, within the overall heavyweight division. And now on box rec on the point system, he is the fourth rated heavyweight in the world. Alexander Povetkin. So he was rumoured to be fighting Alexander Usyk. He sort of said, no, I'm not going to, to, to do this for Usyk's first fight at heavyweight, but I want to fight him later in the year. So this will potentially fight him later in the year. So that begs the question, if he's looking at that option, you know, how likely is it that he's going to be fighting Dillian White in July? I'm not convinced. And uh, World of Boxing, who Povetkin is with, it owes, uh, you know, Eddie Hearn and Dillian White nothing. So this would kind of be a, a fight that would really help Dillian White's career. And in that scenario, you have to ask yourself, are they willing just to do that? Because ultimately, this helps Dillian White more than Alexander Povetkin. Povetkin, the uh, veteran contender with a resume a mile long, that is a very good name for White to get on his record. So if that happened, you'd have to think that Povetkin would have to be overpaid to take that fight. Whereas Dillian White may see himself as an A-side versus Alexander Povetkin, but, uh, and maybe that in, in terms of fan appeal right now, maybe that's true. But if he wants to get that fight, I think they would have to overpay. And it probably, Alexander Povetkin probably gets 50-50 in that fight. Uh, Jarrell Miller, he's fighting Joshua, not happening. Luis Ortiz. Well, this is an interesting case because there's been so much talk about White and Ortiz, you know, apart from that eliminator that was ordered, um, both sort of calling each other out saying they want to fight and it's never quite materialized. And there was that option before Christmas where White could have fought Ortiz and ultimately they went for the money fight and they even sort of said you know that wouldn't be as big a fight as the Chisora fight so you can sort of see the rationale was to go for the paydays but Luis Ortiz at the back end of his career he's had a couple of fights um, since his Wilder loss I think it's three fights he's looked okay in those most recently fought Christian Hammer um, it looks somewhat vulnerable in that one but you know I think again it'd be a case of they would need to overpay Luis Ortiz to take that fight bring him to the UK, um, but are they willing to do that? And given they've sort of spoken some concerns before, this is Eddie Hearn about marketing uh, an Ortiz type fight on pay-per-view, are they really going to be able to bring him over and do that? I think they should, that'd be a great fight, but can they do it? Is Luis Ortiz looking in a different direction? Because after Deontay Wilder's next fight, it's possible that Luis Ortiz could get a rematch with Deontay Wilder. So he may just want to tread water for the next couple of months just to see where the sort of chips fall in regards to the Wilder situation because there is no guarantee that Wilder and Anthony Joshua, if they win their next fights, will fight each other any time this year. So Luis Ortiz or Adam Kovnatsky, they are the, the most likely next opponents for Deontay Wilder if Wilder and Anthony Joshua don't fight. At number eight on box rec here, you've got Kubrat Pulev. Just because he has this IBF mandatory status, I can't see him risking it against Dillian White. Um, and also similarly, uh, Adam Kovnatsky at number nine. I can't see him putting his position within the WBC at risk to face Dillian White because he is eyeing and vying for a title shot with Deontay Wilder and potentially he could get it next. Uh, number 10, Dominic Brazil. He is facing Deontay Wilder on May 18th. If he loses that fight, well then, you know, he's probably out of the picture for a fight. White would not fight him off a loss. Joseph Parker. So this is an interesting option. And because Joseph Parker doesn't have a fight scheduled, there was the controversy with Dillian White for the first fight. You could actually make a case that maybe that becomes a viable option for a rematch. And it's gone very quiet on the Parker front. Uh, they have been, uh, this is his promoter, David Higgins, talking about a mid-year fight potentially in New Zealand or maybe something in July, you know, in the UK around that time mid-year. And that could be against Derek Chisora. They did want to sort of get that fight on with Chisora, but they wanted adequate notice. So if Chisora gets through his fight with Senad Gashi, maybe you will see a Joseph Parker and uh, Derek Chisora fight but potentially some of leaving his options open and seeing that the limited options for Dillian White 
maybe that opens the door to a rematch. We have to consider that. Although I think in terms of what Joseph Parker and his team would want from that fight, I'm not sure that they could come to an agreement because they clearly believe from some of the public statements in recent months that it's still roughly, you know, it should be on something on the same terms, roughly 50-50, whereas Dillian White would probably argue he's the A-side now and he deserves a much bigger cut than Joseph Parker, although I'm sure fans would have varying views on that. Oscar Rivas, well, he's tied into um, to top ranker. He's a PBC fighter, but uh, ESPN do have some sort of promotional control over at least his next fight. And there has been talk he will um, sign a deal with ESPN and top rank. So I can't see that fight happening, neither with the Puglia fight, unless Dillian White joined ESPN and top rank. Joe Joyce, he's uh, with PBC at the moment. Can't see that happening at the moment. Same with Philip Hergovich. Even though he's been co-promoted now by Matchroom, they are still building building him up. I can't see them tossing him straight into a fight with Dillian White. But to the casual market in general, which sort of runs boxing and sort of generates the money for boxing, Philip Hergovich is still on the fringe of being a known guy within the heavyweight division. Even though, you know, after just seven fights, he is now the 14th rated boxer on BoxRec. Ajit Kabiel, well, there has been some sort of talk that maybe he could be in the mix for a white fight, but I think uh, Kabiel's promoters, um, SES, uh, they're going to direct him in a different direction. They're looking for eliminators to a title shot. Dillian White fight, that would just be a payday. Although Ajit Kabiel, I think, would have a pretty decent shot in a fight with Dillian White. He is a very good boxer, and he could potentially outpoint White over, you know, 12 rounds. Derek Chisora at 16, that's not going to happen. Christian Hammer coming off a loss, probably um, not enough um, sort of buzz and hype around him anymore. That's probably not happening. Um, Charles Martin, uh, he's with PBC, unlikely to be happening. Not sure that that could sort of sell in the UK given uh, with casuals, given his um, sort of two-round sort of quitting job back in 2016 against Joshua. Andy Ruiz Jr. at 19, he's just recently signed with PBC. It's more likely that Ruiz after his next fight against Alexander Dimitrenko if he wins that that he could end up fighting one of his stable mates like a Charles Martin for example and at 20 Robert Hellenius he's already fought and beaten him but so you start to get down to the guys where it, it's really hard to make a case for a pay-per-view fight so as I see it you've got um, Alexander Povetkin, Luis Ortiz and a Joseph Parker rematch that's uh, the sort of viable options but Really, how viable are those fights? I think he would have to overpay Povetkin and Ortiz to take that fight. And are they willing to do that, given that, you know, the money has been central, you know, to what he's been doing with his career? Is he willing to give them a relatively even cut of the pie to face him? But without doing that, who does he face face next? And that becomes the big question here. And then it becomes a case of if he um, is just drifting for months and months and say the July um, 13th date or whenever it is in July, if that gets pushed out and if he's not on pay-per-view and it's not the right opponent, well, he starts to lose a bit of um, recognition and marquee value within the heavyweight division. And at the time when he's been pretty much at the peak of his popularity and earning power, you want to have him back in the ring you know, pretty soon to be capitalizing on that. Otherwise, it's a lost opportunity. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they can secure a relevant opponent for Dillian White next because he's beyond the point now of just stay busy fights. He can't just fight someone in the top 30 and fans will be okay with it because, and even the Chisora fight, that was for many fans on the bubble of being pay per view worthy. Some people didn't want to pay for that fight, but, you know, it was because of the, the history there and it was the rematch that kind of justified it to some extent but you know he can't just be fighting anyone and be on pay-per-view because he's not that big you know whereas Anthony Joshua you know can fight Eric Molina like he did back in 2016 that was still pay-per-view Dillian White doesn't have that isn't afforded that same luxury not yet at least so they have to tread carefully and they really need one of these names these bigger names otherwise you know it could just continue to drift and we'll have to see where it goes what do you make of it all Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.